Hello travelers, so today I want to do just a quick video on working with a lightweight setup. So for me, um, usually I took my MacBook Pro with me on trips to do mainly video editing. So for me in this case, the MacBook Pro was a little bit overkill, especially in terms of weight. It's about 1.3 kilograms, which is uh, 2.8 pounds. So for me, this was the heaviest thing in my bag and something that I didn't realize until recently that I could replace with something much lighter. So when I was researching different ways to edit video on the go, I came across a lot of people using the iPad Pro uh, with LumaFusion, and then it got me thinking that uh, perhaps I could use LumaFusion on my phone and pair it with a small folding keyboard like this one and have a very lightweight, pocketable even setup for editing video and stuff like that. Now I did try editing some video on the phone and it works perfectly. The only problem is that the screen is a tiny bit too small for editing some of the, the text and the size of the titles and stuff like that, but still very doable on the go if you were in a pinch. So that led me to looking at iPad Pros, um, but then I got into looking at the weight of them. And just for the iPad Pro itself, um, it's about 500 grams or just just slightly under 500 grams, which is one pound. Obviously, if you're gonna be typing with a keyboard, this smart cover is another 300 grams, which is about 10 ounces or 12 ounces. Um, so altogether, that ends up being quite close to the weight of like a MacBook, uh, a 12 inch MacBook. Um, but then the 12 inch MacBook isn't quite as powerful. It isn't quite as powerful for editing video because it doesn't have the graphics card and stuff like that in it. Obviously you could pair the iPad Pro with this keyboard, which is only 170 grams, which is about six ounces. So you can get the weight of the iPad Pro down quite low if you wanted to. But obviously if you're buying an iPad Pro, you'd want to pair it with a smart cover and have a nice neat package. So that led me to the iPad mini, which is this one here. It's very thin, light, and it's got a, a screen that is about the size of two iPhones put together. So it gives you a lot more room to work the video. And the great thing is that it has the pencil support. So you can use the pencil to scroll the timeline, tap on small areas or adjust small things that you couldn't do with just your fingers on the iPhone. Now this one weighs 300 grams, which is 10 ounces or 10 and a half ounces. And that is so lightweight. It's basically the same weight as a phone or just a little bit over. And if you pair that with the 170 gram folding keyboard here, it makes a really nice little setup, which is, which is the same weight as the iPad Pro without the keyboard. So you can get an iPad mini with a keyboard for the same weight as the iPad Pro without the keyboard. <laughs> And the great thing about the iPad mini is it has the A12 chip, which is still powerful enough to do four, even 4K video editing, um, but I usually just do 1080. And it does this without any lag or any hiccups and it doesn't have a fan that runs up and makes a loud noise. So for me, this is actually a really nice package. So basically when you're gonna be using the iPad mini for any kind of work, you'll probably want an external hard drive to back stuff up onto. So I've got this SSD here, this is 500 gigabytes. And you will want the adapter here, which has the USB 3 and a power supply. So that supplies the USB port, because if you plug this in without a power supply, it's gonna say it takes up too much power and you can't run it. So you need to plug this plus an external battery at the same time into the iPad mini, and then you can transfer your data across. The same works for transferring data from a camera, for example, and any other USB thumb drive or stick that you wanna use. So that means I would need to take this, which is USB-C to USB standard. That plugs into here, and then I would take this one as well, which is a lightning to USB, so I can use this to power the adapter itself. All right, so let me just show you how I go about making a video with the iPad mini from start to finish. So usually I would start with IA Writer and I would type out the script here um, and then I'd have it all ready. I would then put my script on one side, the audio recording on the other, read out my script into the audio. And then once that is done, edit my audio here in uh, Ferrite. Once that's all done, I would then go to Orphonic, which is a website that helps you get more crisp audio and clear out any of the hiss and background noise. Then export that down from here and pop that all into LumaFusion. And from here, you can use the Apple Pencil and it's really good for scrolling and getting fine points and then cutting, clipping, 
editing, deleting all the different things, putting together your titles here. So I've got some preset titles, um, which I would use in my videos. So on the phone, for example, these background areas are hard to select, but with the pencil, it's very easy to select and edit those as you need. So the pencil paired with the iPad mini and the keyboard here for shortcuts, it's very, very handy and very usable for travel and it's very lightweight. So altogether it's about 470 grams, which is about 16 ounces. So another thing I wanted to talk about for editing on the go is if you didn't want to have to take a mirrorless camera, which I often do, um, you can actually use your iPhone as the camera. And if you have an Apple Watch, so what you can do is just go ahead and open the remote shutter and that will show you a little preview of the camera and there's almost no lag in that and you can also zoom in and out so you have full control of your camera and you can see yourself okay so this is the standard rear facing camera on the iphone 11 um, just to show you how it looks especially with the stabilization should be pretty good i'll show you what the front facing camera looks like in a moment it's not quite as stable but it's still quite clear and looks pretty good now one of the great things about the iphone 11 is you can actually zoom out to the wide angle and get something of a GoPro sort of look. So do that right now. Just as you can see here, I'm using the watch as a viewfinder. Okay, so I'm about to zoom out. There we go. So it's so wide you might even be able to see the muffler on the microphone just up in the corner of the screen. Um, but you can see it's still quite stable. The only problem is that uh, this particular wide angle is a little bit dark for night time. So I probably wouldn't use it at night. You can use a watch and a phone to put together a video and have a very mobile, very compact, very usable video editing experience, especially while you're traveling. For me, this is basically gonna be invaluable especially to save all that weight over well over a kilogram um, for my packing weight because the MacBook is just so heavy. Now I'm just going to quickly switch over to the front camera just to show you how that is. So this is the front facing camera. Uh, one of the unfortunate things about it is that it doesn't actually have the same stabilization as the rear cameras. Um, the quality is not too bad but again um, you can see the stabilization isn't quite as good. Um, and I think the stabilization is going to be one of the things that is important for your video so that people don't feel <laughs> ill while watching it. Um, so that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments um, what is your method of editing video or working while you're traveling, if you still prefer um, a laptop. And um, be sure to let me know in the comments. And be sure to stay subscribed to keep up to date with future videos. And I will see you in the next one.